Um, we were located, the Children's Museum was located on the Capitol campus. And what that looked like for me is that I had a little tiny office <coughs> on the top floor where the... the I remember. <laughs> where the, I was on your board, remember? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> and the ceiling was always leaking, so I used to have a funnel that sat above my head that went down to a bucket next to me. And I got a call from the front desk and they said, there's a man named Drew who wants to speak to you. And I thought to myself, Drew, I don't know a Drew who is Drew. The, the guy with the funny hat. With the chicken hat. The chicken hat. He's the guy with the chicken hat. And I said, ask him who he is. And they said, well, he's a builder in the area and he wants to talk to you about the Children's Museum. And I just remember thinking, what the heck does he want to sell me? I always think of Drew as the dad that has a funny stocking cap on pushing his two daughters up the 4th Street Bridge. And I went downstairs, and that was the first time that I met our Drew. So when my daughters were young, we had a double stroller, and we were at Arts Walk, and I bought a chicken hat when, uh, that would have been 2004, 2005, and, and I've been wearing it ever since, and, uh, and to the point now where they get a little embarrassed when I take my chicken hat out, but I, I still do. You know, he, he's like, uh... Pee Wee Herman <laughs> in that regard. And he came up to my little office and he sat in front of me and he started talking to me and he said, I want to help build a new children's museum. And I can remember just looking across the table at him and thinking, what's, what's this all about? He comes into my office and he says, I know this is a dumb idea, but I want to bounce this off of you. And now you have to remember, we didn't even have a space, we didn't have money, we didn't know how we were going to get to a new children's museum. He's got passion for, for certain things that are, you know, that are very infectious. The only thing that we knew at that point was that our lease was going to be up at the state capitol and they were going to tear down that building. This is, this is our uh, fish campaign. You probably all received 100 mailings to buy a fish. It's got a great touch and feel to it. So this is the art studio. Big bank of windows, north light. Drew was instrumental in the construction and the uh, the creation of the hands-on children's museum. That's actually called a big ass fan. He was down there day in and day out, overlooking the project. So the role play that's going to happen here is going to be all sorts of, parents get out of the way and let the kids go. And yeah. It's really fun to watch kids who, who want to be um, entrepreneurs. You stuff them in, and then they shoot around and spit out, and then you're going to go catch them. This is, a, this is a two and a half story climber. Um, the wrap around the stairs that feed a circular tube slide that flush the kids out. No, not a water slide. Water slide. So that's the kind of guy he is. I mean, he, he puts his heart and soul into this community uh, because he loves it and he, he really enjoys seeing the community become a better place to live and, and to raise families. Drew is the fifth generation of the Phillips family. Drew and Jim are fifth generation in construction that it started with not just his grandfather, but his great-grandfather and his great-great-grandfather. You know, some of my earliest memories as a kid are playing with my sister and, and our friends. We used to live uh, over on the Yum Highway. We'd come down to the park and play. We would take the brewery tours over and over again, where we would steal pop after pop after pop. Not steal, they'd give it away. Um, I think it was Drew's grandfather actually built the tasting room and part of the brewery facility. My engagement photos with my wife and my three dogs are on the rocks just down here in the water. That park is an incredible treasure inside of our community. Um, and most people don't realize it. it's actually not a city facility. It actually is um, owned by the Olympia Tumwater Foundation. The park and the Schmidt-Manson property uh, and the scholarship programs are all 
the pieces of the Olympia Tumwater Foundation that the Schmidt family put together 50 years ago as a benefit to the community and something that we strive to help keep going. This foundation gives more money away to, to kids going to college than any other group uh, in the area. A couple of years ago, the property owner of the historic brew house, George Heigerkin, gifted to the city the historic brew tower. And, and the 112-year-old building needed emergency help. We needed to do some emergency improvements right of way to stabilize that building, to put a temporary roof on it, um, and to close up the windows. And we did not have funding to do that. And Drew, quite frankly, took a leadership role in bringing his own resources, resources of Forma, and connections that he had in the community. One Christmas, Drew and I spent at Capitol High School because the roof had collapsed uh, due to some snow loading. And so we, uh, we did a, a big renovation and an emergency repair there. I love to give people challenges, and it's fun to watch Drew with a challenge, because when I threw out saying, I'd like to try to get a platinum league rated building, and you have to tell me why we can't. If there's a strong argument financially why we can't, I'll listen. And Drew, if you get to know him, and you present him with a challenge, he stops. And, and, and momentarily, there's a pause, and then you get the Drew smile, and he goes, oh, we can do that. And at the end of the day, we were able to basically deliver that building at a square footage cost that was probably half of what some of the other lead platinum buildings um, in the area or, or in this, the United States have, have cost. And he turns around and he produces the highest lead rated building in the Western Hemisphere. Well, we've done some pretty interesting work over the years uh, at SeaTac Airport. Uh, we did the uh, control tower renovation after the Nisqually earthquake. Well, that's the, one of the most rewarding parts of our business is we get to go into these different communities, uh, sometimes you know, underserved communities where there's a real need for something. And the, the Mason Transit Project is a, a good example of that. I mean, they didn't, they didn't really have those kind of resources, and I think they were kind of uh, working on a bit of a budget. Recently, our science building, which is coming up behind this building, we challenged him with that we need you to build a science building for $275 a square foot or less. We're not just building buildings. I mean, that's what we do as a general contractor, but basically we're building communities. They don't have to do that. They're, they're very busy throughout the state building big buildings, state buildings, all kinds of things. They don't have to take the time to do that but they care. Um, when we think about the legacy of the Bershar Phillips Forma Construction Group um, in this community, you have to say that it not only includes the um, grandparents, the parents, and, and the current generation, but it's the workers who, who work for the company as well. I think that the Phillips family sets such an example that it inspires their their uh, employees to want to do the same.